Spider-Man has starred in eight solo films that have made over $30 billion. Let's look at the very best high-end Spidey action figures. Let's start out with the very first costume that Peter wears in the movies. Sam Raimi's trilogy was incredibly faithful to the original Steve Ditko and Stan Lee comics. It is shocking how much Ditko and Lee packed into that first 15-page origin story in Amazing Fantasy 15. The Spider Bite, the murder of Uncle Ben, Spidey's revenge, and of course, the greatest line in comics history. But they managed to squeeze in Peter's selfish attempt to earn money from his newfound powers by wrestling Crusher Hogan. This figure is an unlicensed bootleg that I ordered from a dealer out of Hong Kong. And while it fills a huge gap in my live action Spidey collection, it's honestly kind of crappy. First off, the base body is truly terrible. I mean, look at this. It barely holds together. The joints are so loose that they just flop around. The arms barely hold their position without the clicking ratchet mechanism. There are, however, some good aspects to this figure. The fact that the underlying body is so scrawny means that the clothing fits really loose, which gives it the look of a teenager in a homemade costume. The airbrush print on the sweatshirt is super screen accurate. And he has nice details on his Nike high tops, down to the proper pattern on the soles. That's a nice touch. The masked face does manage to capture Tobey Maguire's eyes, and the fit on it's pretty good. The lightness underneath, while certainly not to modern Hot toy standards, is it's recognizable as Tobey. Until we get a proper licensed version, I think this one will do just fine. The 2002 Spider-Man movie was an unprecedented success. It was the first movie in history to bring in $100 million in its opening weekend. I'll never forget that first promotional image of Spidey in his costume. After the X-Men films had gone away from the comic looks, here was an incredibly comic accurate suit ready for the big screen. Toy Biz held the Marvel license at the time, and they produced a cloth costumed 12 inch figure for their collector line. Look guys, action figures have come a long way in the last 20 years, but there are still some things to love about this figure. The costume is extremely screen accurate, with the silver web lines and the distinctive spider logo on the front of the suit. It actually has great articulation, and you can get it into a ton of cool poses. Even the fingers are articulated, so that he can make thwippy hands. Now for the not so good. The sleeves aren't quite long enough, and the neck shows as well. The rubbery mask is starting to degrade, and while there is a Toby head sculpt underneath, I'm afraid this thing will disintegrate if I try to take it off, so I'm not gonna. The Velcro connection in the back is pretty hideous, and it disrupts the logo, which has faded to pink over the years. But all of that aside, this is a terrific reminder of a magical time when the entire world was Spidey crazy. In 2007, Metacom Toys produced this figure for Spider-Man 3. As you can see, it adapted several of the changes in Spidey's costume over the course of the movies. The blues of the suit were lighter, and the web lines had transitioned from silver to black. Perhaps most importantly, the eyelet pieces were more of a comic white on this version. The suit itself is less of a cloth material and more of a rubbery substance. That looks really good in static poses, but it tends to bunch up when you bend the joints. Metacom did, however, solve the problem of baggy, ill-fitting mask by using a sculpted head, which looks pretty great, although it's a little small for the body. I am a huge fan of Steve Ditko's original design, and I love the different interpretations of the Spider logo on the back of the suit. This figure does an excellent job of representing the screen version. As you can see, we're getting there, but we just haven't quite made it yet. Hot Toys finally makes the list with their movie masterpiece Spider-Man 3 figure from 2013. While this figure is technically from the third film, I actually think it does a great job of representing the entire Raimi trilogy. With this figure, we finally get the level of cloth costume detail that we are now accustomed to. While not as tight as some of the current figures, this actually allows for more freedom of movement without the fear of permanently bending or wrinkling the suit. 
These web lines are phenomenal. They're raised and silver, but much like the film, they change color depending on the lighting. All of the fine details are here, like the spider logos on the front and on the back, and the tech mesh pattern weaved into the darker parts. The mask itself is perfection, with perhaps a slight nod to the first film with the more silver eyelet pieces. If I had any complaint, it would be that the one-piece suit does tend to sag at the jawline, but that is truly nitpicking what is in so many ways the definitive Sam Raimi, Tobey Maguire, Spider-Man figure. Andrew Garfield's time behind the webs was marked with a significant alteration to the Spider-Man suit, which we can see here with this Metacom Real Action Heroes version. The sleek costume suits Garfield's slender frame, and the details of this version are really captured here, particularly the purposefully incomplete web lines on the abdomen, and then again down the sides of the legs. Metacom did a nice job with the detailing of the footwear. There's a lot going on here, and they managed to get all of these funky angles just right. The head is fully sculpted plastic, but the color of the mask perfectly matches the suit, which isn't easy to do, and the gold reflective lenses really shine. Over the years, however, the material has bunched up some, and it actually even pulled loose in the back at the waist. But overall, this is a dynamic example of this unique look. Not to be outdone, Hot Toys released their version of this costume as well. The most striking difference when having both of these figures in hand is that the blue on the Hot Toys figure is significantly lighter, which allows for the black racing stripes on the suit to show up much better. They opted for the head sculpt to be made of cloth like the rest of the suit, but oddly enough, I can see a slight difference in the color of the reds. That said, the gold eyelets are more pronounced on this version, so that's a plus. The greatest separator of these two figures is that the Hot Toys version comes with a maskless Andrew Garfield head. It is really sharp, with an excellent likeness that pops right on place. After moving away from the classic comic look for Garfield's first film, the second gave us arguably the most comic accurate suit to date, seen here in Hot Toys' recent Amazing Spider-Man figure. Again, the lean frame of Garfield lends itself to a perfect Spidey silhouette. Gone are those funky web patterns, and in their place comes a suit straight from the comic page. But with the raised web lines that seem to change color in different lighting, reminiscent of the Sam Raimi looks. The spider logos on the front and on the back also call back to those suits from the original movie trilogy. While not quite as large as, say, a Todd McFarlane drawing, these eyepieces are significantly larger than any other live-action version of the Web Slinger, adding to the comic-inspired look. Just like the previous version, a simple pop allows you to switch between the masked head and the Garfield head sculpt, and you can see how 10 years of sculpting and face printing technology have allowed for even more accurate representations. Overall, this is a fantastic figure of a fantastic design. Well done. I cannot think of a figure more perfectly suited for the 12-inch cloth costume style than the Spider-Man Homecoming homemade suit. This figure literally has everything, from the pulled-up tube socks to the baggy sweatpants to the zippered hoodie with the cut-off sleeves. Just perfect execution of a soft goods costume. Then the details. Just look at how much sculpting and paint went into these web shooters. You can feel the pressure on the pads of this thwipping hand, and you can see the detailed mechanism on the open palm. I actually never realized that Peter wore webbed gloves until I took a close look at this figure. The eyelet pieces on the mask contain more brilliant detail. Plus, the mask itself has a softer cotton compared to other spiky figures. Even the asymmetrical spider logo has a hand-drawn feel to it. There's a lot more to come, but it's hard to imagine a more perfectly executed figure. Up next is the red and blue suit from Spider-Man Homecoming, my favorite thus far of all the Tom Holland Spidey looks. It should come as no surprise to longtime viewers of the channel why I love this figure so much. It's all the Ditko vibes it gives off. It starts with the color palette, 
the bright red and blue complement each other so well and give off such a joyous comic feel. I love that smaller logo on the front, in a Ditko kind of way. And of course, the eyepieces rock that 60s nostalgia. Not too big, and with an almost art deco flair to the thick black outlines. But the most Ditko aspect has to be the back spider logo. Clearly, the designers were making a statement here, calling back to those earliest Spidey issues of the swing in 60s. But despite all the callbacks, this figure is thoroughly modern. The web shooters are intricately detailed with multiple tiny paint applications. And the head solves the mask problem with a brilliant solution. It's still the same cloth material as the rest of the suit, but by crafting a separate piece, it allows for greater range of movement and avoids the neck sagging we have seen on previous figures. All in all, Spidey's homecoming suit perfectly bridges the gap between modernity and nostalgia. Blatant cash grab or the greatest new character of the 2000s? When it comes to Night Monkey, I gotta go with the latter. Sure, I get it. This could very easily be any random generic army guy or SWAT team member. I mean, there's not even any paint on this thing. The hands and the web shooters look like simple reuses from previous figures. But then you get to the head. Fury knew what he was doing when he gave Pete this suit. The eyepieces make the man. Then, they're on a hinge so that you can tilt them up, revealing Tom's big brown eyes beneath. Look, I'll admit it, there's nothing special here, but I laughed out loud when Ned spontaneously came up with the name Night Monkey. And the scene with him and Betty screaming for Night Monkey's help, well, those are just the little human touches that have made Tom Holland's Spidey films so freaking great. Moving on to the second costume we saw in Far From Home, here is the Hot Toys version of the modified suit. Obviously, this outfit shares a striking resemblance to the Homecoming suit, and I'm okay with that, because I love that costume. I like to think that replacing the blue with black is a nod to Spidey's first appearance, where he was colored wearing a red and black costume instead of the traditional red and blues. The white spider on the back of the costume stands out nicely, and again, we get a really solid Spidey head skull. I would like to point out one advancement I noticed on this figure. The fabric of the costume is seamlessly attached to the top of the foot, which keeps the fabric from bunching up and maintains the sleek lines. But Hot Toys added a toe joint just past this connection. It's subtle, but it's a super cool addition. It's time to move on to No Way Home and another version of the red and blue suit, just turned inside out. There have been a number of 6-inch versions of the inverted suit, but most of them were sorely lacking, mainly due to the limitations of figures of that scale. Not so here. You really do get a sense of all the electronics, and not just on the gold parts. There's a ton of shadow striping on the black aspects of this costume as well. Both of these are in full effect as we scan across the masked head. The included accessories are worth mentioning as well. He comes with the gauntlet Doctor Strange provided him, and there's even a sweet magic effect which attaches to the chest via a magnet. We need more magnets on toys. The included Tom head sculpt has a slightly ruffled hairdo. So again, could have been just a cash grab, but it turned out to be a pretty great figure. I can't fully explain why I hate the Iron Spider suit. I think it's partly because I despise that storyline in the comics, but hey, it saved me several hundred bucks not getting this one. Which means I'm not the hugest fan of the integrated suit either, but it's just so damn nice I can't help myself. If it's not readily apparent, I like my Spidey looking like the comics, or Night Monkey. I don't really like him as Iron Boy. But the execution of this particular figure, that shiny gold color just looks so good across his chest. I also agree with combining the gold with the black, that's a classic combo. The slots to attach the spider arms are nicely hidden on the back, and yeah, I mean, I guess this is pretty cool for what it is. I'm just never going to accept this as my Spider-Man. 
My favorite accessory that this figure came with is the alternate head with the half-up mask. Now that looks like something from the comics. And this should work with my other Hot Toys, I just haven't tried it yet. But like many of you, I almost lost my mind when I saw Tom swinging in those final scenes in that neoclassical red and blue suit. I have this Hot Toy pre-ordered. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to see a video of it once it arrives. But until then, for the best in comics history and action figures, subscribe to Carbon Scoring.